The first speakers today are you know, two of the most amazing people. Paula Bacon. Paula Bacon is responsible for horse slaughter being exposed for what it is. And the reason is, is because she has had first-hand experience as the former mayor of Kaufman, Texas. She was involved in closing down Dallas Crown. So she is a true pioneer, um, activist. We, the, the information that she has supplied to politicians, to state governments, to the federal government, to people in the know, for people with influence, she is helping to expose horse slaughter and keep it out of communities, and we are so happy to have her here today. Let me look at my notes real quick. Uh, what I was thinking was, this is important, and uh, I think because I think we need this more than just safe. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. Safe is great, right? And we want that to work. But we also need some backup, and I hope I can provide you know, some good information that kind of drives home the point that there's nothing about horse slaughter that is acceptable, period. And, and what it does to small communities is absolutely brutalizing. And you may have heard of Kaufman, Texas, in the news recently, with the murder of the assistant DA and then the, the, the district attorney and his wife in their home and on the street, you know, just extremely brazen and blatant and brutal, and that's Kaufman, Texas. So I'm not going to say any more. All right. So, um, but anyway, um, uh, and then the second thing is, is I'm anxious that you all have the resources that you need. I believe in the people in this room. I believe that it's important that you have the tools that you need because you will go, are going to be the ones that make a difference. I, there are a lot of people around that are more passive, and I feel like when I come to equine advocates, there's, there's, there's stuff going to happen as a result. And so there's a website which is uh, wonky and, and uh, all that, but it's called KaufmanZoning.net. And on that, if you'll just do Control F, and find Mayor Paula Bacon or something like that, um, you'll find my letter, which I want you to have and use um, uh, because it's been put to good use uh, with small communities and at the state level, and then hopefully we're going to see it helpful in the federal level. But it's this is it. How did I do this? And then um, I'm just going to quickly say this. This, okay. This, this is the letter. It's, the letter is six pages, and then the documentation is attached to the letter. It, you can print this sucker out, read it once, and you're going to know this story. Some of it you're not going to be able to believe, but it's the truth, and I can document it. Oh, you'll be an expert on what happens to small communities, and that's important, too. So I just, I just want to encourage you with all my heart that um, I'm seeing, thank you, the horses every day in Kaufman, Texas, in two Kilbyers pens. And it's killing me and them. And we have got to make this happen. Um, it's so unfair. So, um, all right. So, one of the things that these, oops, uh, uh, <laughs> that, that, so one of the areas of pushback that you're going to be in, in, in just amazed by is legislators, lawmakers, aides, uh, county commissioners, whoever uh, will say, you know, I say a little bit about how horse slaughter is, is had a negatively impacted my community. And I get this. What? That is so crazy. So how is that different from having any slaughter plan? <laughs> This is what that makes me feel like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, these are horses, 19 uh, Edwards yeah. paint horses, foundation paint horses when Mr. Edwards died in Oklahoma. <laughs> His family didn't know about horses really. Um, the family allowed uh, somebody that worked for their dad to take the horses for an auction, some of them. They ended up in Kaufman. It was a rigged auction. Only kill buyers attended. It was on Nightline in 2006. Um, the, but later, 19 of the horses showed up. Jim Fowler, one of our sex offenders, um, had 19 of the horses and wanted to sell it to a rescue so that 
he could get rid of the horses. I don't know. Maybe his trailer had a flat. I don't know. But we got the horses, and Willie Nelson agreed to take them. These are these were the saddest, wannest horses. And um, a month later, we had a press conference at Willie Nelson's ranch, and this is the horses were so excited, and they were. It was like they were glowing. One month of good groceries and a few minerals, and you know they were out of this world happy. And I couldn't spend a lot of time on this, or I'd show you the picture of Willie Nelson leaning down, talking to one of the horses. It, you know, he's crouched like an Indian, kind of. You know, just wonderful stuff. So it's it's good. But what are you talking about? Is this backwards? What? So anyway, I wanted to quickly do this last night after our whole day and thinking about it. Um, I thought, well, let me do this real quick. There's so much wrong with that question. So it, how is a horse slaughter plant different from any horse, any slaughter plant? They're all crap. I mean, um, uh, negative. And, um, <laughs> and um, so I think there's a lot wrong, but let's just plow on because we do have to address that question. And here I'm going to boom, boom, boom. Horse slaughter <laughs> is different because horse slaughter stigmatizes the community, first of all. You can't imagine how significant that is. You, you can't really read people's mind. Why aren't you going to bring this good development, this good housing project, this whatever to Kaufman? Well, it's just not a good fit. It stigmatizes your community. The only thing you are going to get is more negative development, which is what has happened in Kaufman. Um, it's getting better, but still. All right, and then how else is it different? It, well, there's twice as much blood in horses. So it's not like a cattle uh, operation. The burden on the infrastructure is doubled. And if they don't know that, now they do because you told them. And plus, being twice as much blood, it doesn't treat. Because you know and I know that the horses are have antibiotics, they're worming paste. And so what we got in Kaufman and what made it such a terrible situation in terms of pretreatment uh, or not really, it wouldn't treat, is because the bacteria were killed. The good bacteria that you have to have to treat this stuff, it, it, it was killed off by the antibiotics in the horse's blood. And, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. John uh, educated me on this that, you know, the it also makes it inappropriate, all the drugs and stuff in the horse's blood, that they, they, they wouldn't sell it as blood meal. They promised that they would. It's, in more, it's a 1986 article I have in here. They weren't going to put any more blood in the system because, you know, one, it's in the newspaper, one pint of blood down the drain is throwing money away. And of course that sounds very, you know, smart to the, to the uh, you know, the city council. Oh, we got this all figured out. And plus, in this newspaper article, they're going to post a big bond, the highest interest possible. That's what it says in the newspaper article. And, and it's in this letter that you can find at KaufmanZoning.net, all of this. And, of course, the bond got sucked up by the attorney quickly and was never re-upped because they were instantly out of compliance because they couldn't sell the blood because the blood is full of all these drugs and the people who would have used blood meal for fertilizer couldn't use it. So we were right back where we had started. In 1986 they reopened after having been closed for terrible things and, and literally blood being in people's toilets and, and showers, I hate to say it but it's true, and, and in the ditches just everywhere because they couldn't handle it and that's that's why it's different. And there's no tax revenues generated as there's no sales tax because they're shipping it all overseas. There's minimal property tax. Our, their average property tax in Kaufman was $1,600 a year. Um, but there were very expensive costs to the host community such as millions on infrastructure and legal fees. So yes, it is different. And the profits, by the way, are shipped out of the community, in fact, out of the country. Horse slaughter is different than cattle slaughter. The stigma leads to stymied development, and if it does occur, it's not desirable. The horse slaughter creates a mini third world country with increased crime rates and increased cost to taxpayers. Yes, it is different. Horse slaughter is not like another slaughter facility, I say. And then you have the increased burden to the hospital and healthcare, the school system, and the quality of housing stock affecting the property tax base. And, and I believe that that's that is also part of this uh, because of the, 
the stigma generally that it, you just can't imagine. All right. So Dallas Crown, bad neighbor, bad business, bad for Kaufman, and bad for the horses. Maybe if you were here last year, you saw this, but this is from a neighbor who made this billboard who lived miles, mile, uh, a Kaufman member who lived miles from the plant, and she and her family decided this was what they wanted to put. They're very opinionated people, and they make billboards all the time. So anyway, here, here, here's the, I'm, by the way, my name is Paula Bacon. I'm the fifth generation uh, Kaufmanite, and um, uh, I served uh, four terms on the city council and two as mayor. And I was mayor from 2003 to 2007. The plant finally closed in March of 2007. In May, I lost a re-election by one vote, thank God. <laughs> Honestly, it was horrible. The good old boys were just killing me. I, I'll just tell you that I was uh, at cross purposes with them pretty quickly uh, in 2003 when I was, became mayor. And so in November of 2003, um, the city attorney and the rest of the council wrote up a resolution uh, censoring me and reprimanding me <laughs> and demanding that I quit printing my newsletter. I had to print a newsletter, hot news, because the newspaper wouldn't print my side of anything. So, you know, I didn't go ballistic. I didn't gun people down the street. I printed hot news. And, uh, it, <laughs> and it's called Kaufman, the, the Kaufman Sun Hot News because sunlight is the best disinfectant. So they they censured and reprimanded me, all this stuff. So it took them 20 minutes to read the thing, the, this nine-page uh, resolution. And um, so I counted to eight, which is kind of my secret weapon. And well, after they were done, the total silence in the room, 50 people in the chamber, council chamber is all that fit, 50 people in the foyer, I knew something was going on. And... Um, so I counted to eight, and I said, so, I guess this means you're not going to let me put the next edition of Hot News in the water bill, huh? <laughs> so fun. Anyway, it worked out because the next edition of Hot News was the resolution that they censured me with, with a little balloon up, against, uh, up and down in all these different places. Their font was like a seven-point font, and I had like a ten or eleven-point font, and and I just would kind of comment on some of the stuff in the resolution. Mayor's comment, you know, there's a world of difference between lightning and a lightning bug. Mark Twain, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that was great. But look, in 2007, the plant announced layoffs. We're going to have to lay people off. It looks like. You know, we're, we're not sure what's going to go on. The, 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 uh, we've got our appeal in to the Supreme Court. We don't know if they're going to hear us, but, uh, the, you know, those 42 fabulous jobs, hmm, they're on the line. Well, this is what happened to our crime rate. This is, this is a layoff, the announcement of a layoff. And a bunch of people left that, that worked at the plant. <coughs> and where is it? I think we have an X here. In March, which is about right here, uh, the plant closed. That's our crime rate. It went from <coughs> about 400 to 135. So the there's a, something you call a boiled toad when you don't realize that the water's getting hotter and hotter and hot. We were boiled toads. We were in the pot <laughs> boiling and didn't even know it. This is, you know, just kind of a little blood spill because I know that uh, it's hard to explain, but maybe that gives you a little picture of what it was like. And this is, this is Oliver Kemsecki in Missouri in the spring of 2012. He's uh, talking about hiring the jobs, and he says that the only people who will do the jobs are going to be uh, people from Mexico, that 95% of the employees would be. This is from the attorney in Missouri who was a volunteer working on this. Um, these, are, these are not good jobs. In Kaufman, the highest paid employee earned just over $10 an hour. Most people were earning six or seven dollars an hour. Forty-two jobs, and um, unfortunately, it did impact uh, much of our community because these were folks doing uh, dangerous work for poor pay, 
and needing health insurance, which they did not have, and the company was self-insured. They were supposed to pay if something happened, and they didn't. So the hospital was very upset with them, too, besides the fact that there were vultures all over the place and that they had to put in a special system, charcoal filters, to keep the smell of the place out. And they saw the injuries, and they treated people. But anyway, um, this is, I want to hurry and get to the point, which is, you know, it was not just Kaufman. Not only is horse slaughter different in terms of a, a slaughter plant, but it's not just that Kaufman was one bad actor. And this is what they're going to say to you, so I want you to be ready to say, no, the state-of-the-art plant in Cavell, uh, in, in Illinois, Cavell, was out of compliance with their environmental regulations from the day they opened to the day they were closed by state law. And there's the chart. Thank you, John. And this is a nat natural valley in, um, in uh, Canada. This is that thing where the river is just a, a little bit out of the picture, but that truck has, uh, is, that's blood coming out the back end of that truck. And it's, he's going to drive up and down. It's on YouTube. You can see, just go to Natural Valley Farms. And you'll see several things, but that's them dumping blood. And um, this is, I have pictures of them doing that in Kaufman. Um, and so, what do you think this horse is saying? <laughs> oh, really? What is he saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. And then, this is just more of it. This because some people think that, that I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. The, 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 the uh, project, what do you call it? Uh, Public Works Director is saying, you know, your, your system has gotten extremely excessive and can cause major damage to our system. It's not improving. It's getting worse. Serious level violations have reached. It's epidemic proportions. This was just typical. This wasn't new. This was ongoing. Um, and this has to do with, uh, oh, I hate this part. This is what makes me sick. I have to do this, so I'm going to warn you guys, children. Look, this is a 2002 article in the Dallas Morning News. Appleton is an important political writer. I think he's in Washington now. And he's printing up whatever um, they, these guys are saying. This is Kim Secchi uh, talking about is how it's a humane alternative. At least you get a few dollars for your old horse that you've been such good friends with. And then here's uh, Dick Kohler, who was the manager of Beltex. And he says, you know, I have one of the most highly regulated, blah, 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 and that I can't imagine any humane violations. I can't imagine it. Well, why can't you? Because it's the reality. So now here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't want to do this, but um, the thing is, <clears throat> in 2006, Julie Caramonte said, November of 2000, do you think we ought to... Um, even though it looks like the plant's going to close it, you know, I said, yeah, let's do it, FOIA. So she FOIA'd the, uh, uh, for the uh, violations to the Humane Transports of Slaughter for the year, just 2006. And it was supposed to cover Beltex because it was, they were bigger than Kaufman. But they actually sent both Kaufman and Beltex in Fort Worth. And by the way, Beltex was uh, in Fort Worth, uh, the other horse slaughter plant. There were three at the time that they all closed in 2007. They, um, they were also, uh, had all kinds of OSHA violations as well as pumping blood into the creek, spilling blood into the creek, blah, blah, blah. So um, the, the thing is, is that when we got this uh, FOIA back after three years, it was 904 pages long. Most of it was photographs. And I think that we have to answer this question once and for all. Isn't it better to have slaughter in the United States and so it's humane and there's less travel? So this is going to answer this question. And I'm going to flash through this fast, and if you don't want to see it, I'm sorry, but just look away, okay? All right. I can't imagine any humane violations. These are the horses. Um, these, are, these are Beltex. If it's got red, it's Beltex. If it's blue, it's Kaufman. That's, that's an easy one. I, there's a lot worse. I gave you an easy one. That's worse. Do you think that old, that might have needed vet care? You know the kill buyers poke out their eyes if they're kickers to give them something else to think about. I'm just telling you. So, um, and so, um, 
there's something that you also need to know about. It's called confession. No, no, no. Observations of a kill of a what is it called? Kill buyer. Yeah. And um, and and it was taken in 1999. 1998. 1998. Ventura County District Attorney. <laughs> Folks, it's not it's not that hard to look at. He's just talking. He's just explaining how it works. And he talks about how what a slim profit margin there is and how no horse is going to get any any care and in fact if you have a kicker you're going to take something and poke its eyes out so that it will not uh, kick the other horses on the on the deck on the truck and um, and so uh, Vickery used it in her article um, one of those pictures there, it's obvious that this is not uncommon, and this was going on in 2006. And you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I can't think of anything that's not rude to say. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'll tickle your ass with a feather. No, I'll kiss your ass on the square. No, anyway, um, if it's just not true that. Uh, there's nothing humane about slaughter. Okay. Am I, are you convinced? We don't need to worry about how the transport is long or anything. Kaufman, Beltex, Cavell were all operating. It's, it's a horrible practice. You know, Nicholas Dodd, Dr. Dodman said it's a horse's worst nightmare. And you know, by the time that horse is in the kill box, obviously it's not the worst thing that's, ever, that's happened to this horse. All right, here's some police summonses because I like the idea that there are police summonses on Dallas Crown. Um, uh, that this is, uh, this is, they're over their limit by 33,000 units. They had a, they had a, you know, anyway, pretty bad stuff. Okay, go, go. All right, this is the mayor saying, quite frankly, we don't want you here. That plant has never made a dime for the city and it never will, 1986. They opened because they didn't change their zoning while they were closed during that year where they had been so bad that they were, we were able to, we closed them because the state closed, came after us and the city of Kaufman and the city of Kaufman went after the, the plan. And so that plan has been a lousy part of the community, says the city coordinator. This is all in this article and you'll have it if you want it. In this. And then they talk about blood and other discharge filled the residential sewer systems and streets. That's a euphemism for blood in the toilet and in the shower. Uh, additional concerns about insects and snakes. You know, do you know there's a product called Snake Away that people in the neighborhood had by their doors? And it was some kind of thing where the snake would crawl into this and couldn't get out of it. But there were snakes, rats, vultures, etc. Blood running down the streets, have, children having to walk through it. But a consultant said that uh, they wouldn't be putting blood in the sewer because they can sell it, and every pint of blood they pour down the sewer is lost money. He also said, and if they violate the law, we can close them down. Fat chance. From 1986 to 2007, we, we did a lot, and there was no way. Do you know it took the Supreme Court refusing to hear their appeal? that the 1949 state law that had been in operation was valid and they had to close and they still didn't close for another 10 days, two weeks. So yeah, don't believe that. All right, I gotta go here. Here's their tax return. This is uh, 12 million sales, $5 in federal income tax. Um, that over a five year period, their tax bracket was three tenths of 1% on sales, of sales. So. Um, uh, so this is what I took to the Texas legislature. A bunch of us went when the Senate Ag Committee was having a hearing, so I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing. It worked. Texas did not have this bill in the legislative session this year, and, and I don't think we're going to. It looks like we've got... We've, anyway, um, so I, I mean, is it good for the committee? You know what the Senate Ag Committee in Texas said? He said to somebody that I know uh, just about a few weeks ago, you know, let Oklahoma fool with it. <laughs> and you know what? I think the emphasis was the word fool. Yeah. Sorry, Stephanie. I'm All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's letters from doctors and physicians wanting the plant closed, and they couldn't stop until I showed you this. 
This is, you know, the 19-month period where they were out of compliance with the environmental laws and, and uh, you know, everything that's yellow is out of compliance. Now, sometimes this, actually, the numbers are right, but what happened was is that they said for nine months, from October to July, we, they wouldn't allow us in to do testing. They did their own testing. And so, miraculously, the numbers began to, to look pretty good, you know, because the answer to pollution is solution. It, it, dilution is solution. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> they were diluting their, their, their testing. And they were, there was no chain of custody. They were taking it to the uh, environmental testing people themselves. It was crazy. And so, yes, they were out of compliance because even though the numbers are right, we couldn't get in to do the testing, which was there to, to, to protect our infrastructure. What you lastly want to know is, is that, well, they demanded individual jury trials, and we couldn't afford to do that. So just on this one 19-month period, we have left on the table, we'll never see, $916,000 in potential fines because we couldn't have individual jury trials for each violation. So, yeah, it's different from a regular slaughter plant, I do believe. Because, you know, they just, just were not going to comply with the laws no matter what we did. And they really didn't seem to have to. So, and they had the deep pockets, as we know, from the, the big money they were pulling in and not paying any taxes. And what was the last thing I was going to tell you about this? Um, 19 months, 9 months, and then what was it? I think, uh... <coughs> Yeah, I, I'm thinking, no, there was something else, it was about it, well, anyway, so, so that's, that's the story, and uh, I'd love to tell you about the OIG report and about the violations that uh, continued over nine and a half years and how few paid fines and how few tickets there are, and so during Q&A, maybe you want to ask me about that, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, Paula, Paula, let me just hand you this. Oh, yeah.